Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Monday. It is the 11th day of September, year of our Lord, 2023. I do pray this finds you well. Had some much, much needed rain, thanks be to God. I didn't have the opportunity to uh, check the forecast today other than being thankful for the rain. Uh, rain, uh, I couldn't tell you the inch total, but puddles, which is amazing considering the ground was so dry. So anyway, very thankful. Uh, also today is a sad anniversary of the attack on our nation on September 11th, year uh, 2001, 22 years ago. Wow. Wow, and I you know, do remember it like it was yesterday. It was uh, in my just first uh, first couple days. Uh, I think it was the second day of classes when that happened, uh, second or third day uh, at, on a, uh, uh, it was Tuesday. And, uh, and I was at seminary. And uh, remember the professor came in and said, boy, the strangest thing happened was you know, that a jet had crashed into the World Trade Center. We had a prayer. You know, the door was shut, and we began our class, which lasted for an hour and a half on that day. And uh, that's all we knew. And that, that you know, is not unprecedented in the history of humanity and flight that uh, 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 there'd be an accident where a plane would fly into a building or something like that. It's very unusual to hear about a jetliner doing that. I don't even know if you mentioned that. But anyway, I remember... Uh, I remember walking out of class an hour and a half later and seeing all my class colleagues, classmates, and uh, upperclassmen, and heading out of the the student commons. And there was a television there towards the chapel. So it's time for for daily chapel. And, and very somber, you could just pick up the air. It was a sunny day. I'm that beautiful day. And I asked one of my colleagues and my classmates, you know, what's going on? He said, we're under attack. And that's kind of all we knew. Uh, he briefly explained to me what he knew. He went to chapel and heard Reverend Dr. Daniel Gard, who was a chaplain, ended up getting called up a short while later to, uh, he was a chaplain in the United States Navy. And uh, he also was the president of Concordia, uh, Illinois. They retired not all that long ago, Concordia, Chicago. But he gave this wonderful sermon, and uh, the president of the seminary came out, you know, reminded us of why we were there, you know, and why we were there as, as seminarians, uh, future pastors studying to spread the love of Christ. It was a really interesting thing. I remember taking my kids out for the next couple of nights. I remember the weather was just absolutely beautiful, too, for the next few nights. This was in Indiana. And looking at the sky in the late evening and seeing nothing, no contrails, which is very common on a beautiful day. You see as the sun sets, you see all those contrails of the planes coming from the west, heading to the west, uh, towards the setting sun, and nothing, nothing because everything was grounded. So we'll say a prayer tonight for nations, uh, the world in confusion, because it still is, and uh, know that our merciful Lord is is uh, in charge, and uh, uh, the day will come where he will put an end to all of this, and we look forward to that in Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Tonight, according to the daily lectionary, we read from Philippians chapter 3. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is no trouble to me and is safe for you. Look out for the dogs, look out for the evildoers, look out for those who mutilate the flesh. For we are the circumcision. We worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, 
in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. For one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way. And if anything you think otherwise, if anything, if and if, if and if anything, good night, nurse. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you, and now tell you, even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, but God is their belly, and their glory, and they glory in their shame, with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body, by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. And that is the word of the Lord with me fumbling, uh, get a few words out of my mouth there. So Paul nears the end of the letter. This is chapter 3, and then chapter 4 is the end. And so before his closing remor remarks, finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. Always we rejoice in the Lord. And he says, you know, a reminder again, look out for the dogs, for those who mutilate the flesh. That's the circumcision crowd. He says, no, we, we are the true circumcision, the spiritual circumcision. Now, there's nothing wrong with circumcision, but when you say that that is what makes you righteous before God, well, there's a problem. He talks about his own pedigree, which is quite remarkable, uh, how he was uh, a leader of the Jews at a very, very early age. And we, we do hear here and there, particularly in the book of Acts, how incredibly learned he is. And yet, he says, whatever gain I had, didn't matter. I mean, he was on the fast track, being a leader in that community. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. If you have Christ, you have everything. But if you have Christ, you're forgiven, and you are an heir to everlasting life. And Paul's going to touch on that. So, he counts everything, uh, counts everything as lost because Jesus Christ is so valuable. He, he is. He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And in him we have forgiveness, as I just mentioned, and, and the promise of everlasting life. So he goes on to talk about also, and this is a reiteration of things we hear in Galatians and Romans, uh, throughout his epistles that, yes, we are saved by by faith, you know, by the righteousness of Christ and the faith that cleans that, not by works. He says, I don't have a righteousness that's his own, that comes from law. It's outside of us. It's a wonderful way to think of the righteousness. You wear it. It's placed on you in your baptism. That's why I've mentioned this many times. This is why we dress children in white robes. So it's a reminder that they are washed clean in the blood of Christ. So with this righteousness is not our own. Not from the law, uh, but it comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, the righteousness of Christ that depends on faith. The faith just simply grasps that. Now, your, your faith is not this a magnificent work we do, but let's prove how strong our faith is. And faith is kind of hard to describe because it's a very it's a very passive thing. And you kind of like you know, you you live in faith without thinking about it. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of sort of simple examples of our of our life. You know, I have faith at the, and I don't think about it. I live in the faith that the people who built this home, and I'm in the basement, and there's two floors above me, and, you know, it's a walkout, so you, you're at, it's a, you know, plus there's the roof on top of that, and the 
in the attic space. And lots of furniture up there. Uh, I'm looking at the beam over here and they're inside the walls and the outer walls. And you think, wow, you know, the people who designed this, the architects, the, uh, the builders, you know, they did their jobs. And I have faith in that. And I don't come home, you know, and the house doesn't stand because of my faith. The house stands because it's the house that it's built. Now think about that. You know, salvation isn't, salvation doesn't happen because of your faith. Your faith simply trusts in what already has happened, what Christ has done. I don't think about it. I come down the stairs, I sit in this chair, turn everything on, get everything ready, do this devotional, and I just don't even give a thought to the, those people did what they needed to do to keep me safe in my basement, to have the house stand. That's how, that's what faith looks like. It's not me going around faith, 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 faith. It's living, existing in that, in that bath of forgiveness. You know, realizing what baptism has done, just living that way, living under the beautiful gift of baptism. So anyway, you know, it's not a righteousness that comes from us. It's from God. And then the faith that just simply clings to that. So, and that ultimately that we may retain we may attain, as Paul does, the resurrection of the dead. That this is not the end of our story. Remember, death is foreign to us. So he says, I, you know, it's not that I've already obtained this, or I'm already perfect, and that doesn't happen in this life. But I press on to make it my own because, for, for what reason does he press on? Because Christ Jesus has made me his own. So it means he's moving. We're living our lives towards that ultimate resurrection, that we will rise from the dead. And he ends this section with, we'll transform our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body by the power that enables to subject all things to himself. We often read that at the graveside of our beloved brothers and sisters who die in the Lord. So, and this is what, you know, so that's a nice bookend of this, uh, of this paragraph here in English. You know, he says, okay, uh, this is what we're, we're moving towards that resurrection. It's, we don't realize it yet. We're going to die, but then our body will rise again. You know, and, and we know this is so because Christ Jesus has made us his own. So, wonderful, wonderful section. A very comforting section. Even it gets a little sad at the end. He talks about people who have were once part of the household of God and now walk as enemies, either with them or against them, uh, enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is their destruction. Their God is their belly. You know, it, it, that's an ancient way of persecuting. Uh, it would lead to the physical things, but it, it was going after our bellies. You know, basically, you, you don't have the ability to feed yourself, can't find a job, can't sell your wares. We're seeing that unfold before us today. You know, that you're seeing uh, these persecutions. People can't do business and that they live in certain states. You know, they're constantly harassed for upholding the faith and what they do, and they can't bring their goods to market. We're seeing that, you know, people trying to sell things are shut down. If they don't tow this, the social justice warrior line, the woke line, they uh, they get shut down. They can't they can't do business in the common marketplace. So for those who God is their belly, you know they they see those things happen, going oh, don't have me, so they go ahead and just capitulate. Um, I see that with a lot of. I'm not a big fan of contemporary Christian music, and there's a few uh, who have been able to navigate those waters of fame without really, you know, succumbing to the temptations, which must be great. But uh, is, uh, you, for those of you who do follow contemporary Christian music, some of the big stars, were, and I want to say it was the heyday of contemporary Christian music back in the, the 90s, um, maybe the early 2000s. And I think it's kind of, you know, it's not quite what it used to be. And uh, like anything like that, it kind of runs its course. Uh, and anyway... I, you know, I remember many of those mega stars, and there's some big ones, Jars of Clay, Amy Grant, and they have all, uh, you know, the Jars of Clay is from downstate here, University of Illinois area, and they got, they had a crossover hit, they, as did Amy Grant, that became, she had a massive hit, a couple of them, on the, you know, the national pop charts, not just the contemporary Christian charts, so a huge international audience, um, same thing with Jars of Clay, 
And uh, it's a good song, too. It's a, They're very talented musicians. And they capitulated. You know, they came out in support of ungodly behaviors. Uh, uh, and, you know, that temptation is there. Speaking of God uh, being... Uh, God being their belly, that you know, they you you see what's happening to some of your colleagues if they if they misspeak publicly, if they uh, uh, um, you know say the wrong thing or sing the wrong thing or come out for what traditional Christian stance, they are they are vilified, and their audiences evaporate, their sponsors are gone, you know, they can't find an outlet anymore, uh, and, and you know people are smart, they're like, well, I don't want that to do for me, so they just so the part of, I don't know, people's hearts and stuff like that. Maybe they're convincing the heart what they're doing is right or they convince themselves. I don't know, but it's just interesting that they start off believing X and they change their position and go Y. And a lot of it is, is be, you know, because, uh, you know, they're in this position. And you think, well, what good they, what good they could do? They could just hold the, you know, hold the line up. Uh, but, you know, again, I, I've not been in that situation, neither famous nor incredibly wealthy like that. Uh, but, you know, God, our God being our belly is... Uh, a great tactic of saving the way we often fall. Uh, anyway, uh, he, he, Paul, again, his final reminder is what I said a few minutes ago. He reminds us our citizenship is in heaven. This is this is not our this is not our home. We're sojourners here. That's a, a scriptural description of us uh, in a number of places. Uh, I am but a stranger here. Heaven is my home. That's not going to be the hymn I'm going to sing tonight. But that that hymn picks up this theme. And the promise is, don't worry, you know, we, we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming to get us, and he's going to take us home. All right. Let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, strengthen us that we may, by faith, live in the promises of holy baptism, and that we may, as your people, go out as the salt and light to our various callings, our daily work, bless the unemployed with gainful employment, and provide for their needs while they await that deliverance. And we pray for the salvation and well-being of our neighbors. We pray for schools, colleges, and seminaries, especially our church schools, places of education, that they may be faithful in their duties and raise up men and women eager to do your work. Bless us with good government and peace here and throughout the world. As we remember this national tragedy, Heavenly Father, we do pray that uh, all those things that sow the seeds of hatred and discord among us would, that you would remove both locally and throughout the world, and that we'd look to each other through the eyes of Christ, uh, being uh, slow to seek vengeance and quick to forgive. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with those who are crying out to you for healing. Wayne, Myron, Dennis, Dave, Don, Ardo, Klaus, Donna, Lou Ray, Cecil, Fern, Chris, Sue, Lori, Don, Tim, Karen, Jeremy, Ron, Liberty, Joe, Bert, Marlis, Anita, Heather, Phil, Katie, D, Dave, Dylan, John, Josiah, Bob, Jason, Jeff, Christy, Camden, Jim, Tom, Ashley, Brad, Paul, Scott, Eric, Deb, Amy, Clint, Beth, Don, Chris, and all who cry out to you. Heal them, answer their prayers according to your good and gracious will. 
Heavenly Father, all this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now a prayer for the world in confusion. The Spirit of God, who didst move upon the face of the waters, and didst bring order out of chaos and light out of darkness, brood over the world filled with strife and bitterness and unholy rivalries. Calm the passions of men, quiet their fears, and breathe into them the spirit of forgiveness and of loving service, that peace and goodwill may prevail in the earth. Be merciful to those who have been driven from their homes by oppression, to widows and orphans, to those who are friendless, alone in the world. Comfort them in their distress, raise up friends and helpers for them among those who have plenty, and may their faith in thee not fail. O God, be merciful unto us, Grant peace in our time. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. In your hands, I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'm going to sing uh, 965, God Bless Our Native Land. God bless our native land, firm may she ever stand. Through storm and night, when the wild tempests rave, ruler of wind and wave, do the Hawaha country save by thy great might. So shall our prayers arise to God above the skies, on him we wait. Thou who art ever nigh, guarding with watchful eye, to thee ah, how loud we cry, God save the state. And that's 965. God bless our native land. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a blessed evening, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.